I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Oh, I've been so, doing um, dad shit. Got yeah, daycare yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, built a little I kitchen. Saw, I there, saw I the pose. 27 places and only one wasn't booked out until 2023. That's unsurprising to me. Like, okay, so like, that's probably the least surprising thing you've said to me. I thought um, I would just be able to call like five to ten places and then have like three options. Yeah, no, no, not especially not with like, um, like infants, especially not with like COVID nineteen happening. Well, the the interesting thing I found is that the national database is not maintained. But the local database for licensed care providers is maintained. And I found that the national database had people showing as active who only operated during COVID shutdowns to supplement their income. Because I found oh. that like three or four places I called just went to a dead number. Oh, so I wow. Called, that's I called the local place that maintains that's the records. That's kind of sus. And they said, okay. oh, yeah, they, they closed down. What? Yeah. So people were just, and then when they lifted restrictions and they could go back to work, they started, they just. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, that's I fun. mean, personally, personally, I wouldn't have gone for it in the first place. Having more than one child around me at any given time is usually a lot. Yeah. Like the only, the only situation where I can handle more than one child around me is when it's my niece and nephews. Is um, when it what is when anything that happens isn't your problem. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Super that. Like yeah. when it's not my problem, I'm fine with kids. Yeah. The second it becomes my problem, it becomes my problem. That, and then I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. Although I, I got lucky because I found out she sleeps like a freaking rock, which is amazing. Cause I haven't been building guitars for a while because of the baby. <laughs> And yeah. I learned that she can sleep through a bandsaw and a dust extractor. So really? That, yep. So I've been working with that. She can sleep through uh, oscillating sand. She can sleep through a lot, apparently. Um, <laughs> so I got. I've I've been doing making some guitars again. That's been fantastic. And she's not in the workshop. My wife's got her upstairs. But my concern was that they're lad tools, and I have cat doors now on all of the internal doors of the house. So mm -hmm. they, you can't just like shut the, the door and expect sound to not go through because there's mm -hmm. a big kitty cat shaped hole in all the doors. I'm a so I know that you're you you don't have just like a cat shaped door, but like there's a part of me that's like imagining a door that's like exactly the size of either Scully or Mulder, and they just kind of like so the doors are, it's the shape of a cat like it's got ears, it's like a circle oh. circle with ears cut into the, all the the doors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of adorable oh it's so adorable it's fantastic it's kind of fucking that's kind of fucking adorable so the way i solve that in my house is i just don't close doors and dakota just is allowed to go wherever the fuck he wants yeah that's like i how it works that's what i was doing but then i was like why am i like in the middle of summer like air conditioning the laundry room and basement to be fair, I have central air, so that's a different. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's different for me. I've just got one big and unit. also, yeah, I yeah. also like my basement. I have closed off and like that's separate. Like, yeah, that's a that's a sealed off space. Oh, they love the basement. They'll go and zip around, run around. Dakota would love the basement too, but there's too much shit down there that he'd eat and get he'd die. <laughs> I, I'm not even kidding. Like I was la yesterday. It took me a while. Like I was like kind of like just laying in bed and just like I don't feel like dealing with today. Yeah, which is what I do um, because I have the luxury of being able to do that as I don't have any children. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. And De well, I have Dakota though, and Dakota was very upset that I hadn't gotten up to feed him yet, 
keep in mind it's 8 a.m. Yeah. And I had fed him at like, I gave him a little bit of food at like 2 a.m. So mm-hmm. like to kind of grease the wheels so he wouldn't wake me up. Yo, oh, good. You're bribing your cat. Okay. Yes. I have reached the point that I am bribing my cat. You, <laughs> you have got me. Okay. But he wakes up and he's just like, like very sad meows right yeah. and like he does this thing where he'll like he'll like take his paw and like just touch my face <laughs> <laughs> like like he's just, trying to seduce like, you into feeding him like like he's not slapping me he's yeah. just touching me yeah a slow touch like a very it's like a very slow like you could see his paw shake because he's moving so slow <laughs> thing where he'll just like he'll reach into my face and just be like poke and you know what the thing is yeah that's really effective at waking me up i believe it like bizarrely effective but anyways um the reason i brought this up is because uh there was a bandage on the nightstand on uh christina's side and uh, he jumped up, he knocked it down, and, like, over the course of the week, he's figured out how to open the bandage. <laughs> and he was playing with the fucking bandage itself and, like, very close to eating it. And I'm just like... Like, the, you... the style with the two pieces of paper that you, like, peel off? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> yes, a latex bandage that will get him bound up so hard that yeah. it, I, I'd have to go to a doctor. Yes. That's funny. <laughs> he, I love that cat, but he has, he is the, like, in terms of self-preservation instinct, in terms of eating shit, yeah. zero. <laughs> zero. <laughs> it's. Yeah. See, my one cat, Mulder, does the same. If I, we have so many face masks without ear things, because just, she eats them. She just eats the ears, the little loopies. <laughs> Well, they're delicious. They're so delicious. You, you do realize that, right? Like, they're just actually super delicious. They're like little worms. The, oh, delicious. They're, they're so spaghettes. Good. They're, they're cat spaghetti. Spaghetti. Oh. Cat spaghetti. <laughs> it connects your poops. It'll be poop, mm. string, poop. Like little turd oh, nunchucks. <laughs> Sometimes Dakota, like, didn't get enough fiber or something, and, like, he does this thing where he scares himself out of the the toilet, out of his bat, his, his That's box. funny. And sometimes there will be, I'll find like a piece of poop, like five feet in front of the litter box because he bolted out <laughs> <laughs> while he's uh, still pooping. Gets the and good I'm just kitty. Like, I'm just like, what are you? <laughs> just a little snaggle tooth <laughs> bandit. Like. And for reference uh, to what Brandon just said, Dakota is missing one tooth, <laughs> so he does actually have a, a, a snaggle tooth. He's adorable. Yeah. <laughs> he's my asshole. And sharp. But he's very sharp. Uh, it took you, It took you like, eight years or so to, like, be able to touch, like, pet him for the first time, I right? I couldn't pet him until he got old. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> All of my pre- earlier attempts just would have, like, him... St- Stuck inside my arm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just a it was little actually, angry demon. I, I actually remember when you first were able to pet him, and it was like it was like <laughs> I was surprised. Was like you were surprised, but it was like a like practically religious experience for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That cat is really fucking funny. Has injured me more than any other cat, including cats that I have lived with. <laughs> He's he's his own character. Yeah. Weirdly, he got he got along he um when Christina started coming, he got along with her pretty well. Although he did do a thing. So um when when uh when she came over one time, she had like gray socks on, and like his favorite toy in the world is like a little gray mouse. Yeah. Right? He's had it since he was a kitten. Um and her socks kind of looked like it. Oh, he did the attacks. But so what happened was he meowed a meow. I had literally never heard that cat meow before. <laughs> and then he just attacked her. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> and like, I'm not sure, but like the last time I checked, I think she still had the like the claw marks from it. <laughs> Did he, was it a meow of like? He thought it was like attacking her foot, and he was like, "This is the moment I've been training for." <laughs> it was like, it was like a mournful meow almost. It's hard to describe. Oh. It was like I wish I had recorded it because I was just like, "Are you okay, Dakota?" Yeah, because like it came, it came from like the depths of his like, like diaphragm. Yeah, kind of meow, like a weird meow for a cat. Like fun, you don't hear that. Like I, it was a deep but loud me. Like I don't. It was confusing. Okay. It was it was bewildering to say the least. <sighs> Although I do have scars from Dakota. I think most people do. I'd be surprised if um, if I met someone who didn't. <laughs> so did I ever tell you the story about how uh, the night that I got Godzilla twenty eighteen, I um I brought it home to watch. Right. Okay. And I was watching it, and I had the the. This is when I was in Rochester, so we had the window open, and I had a ground level apartment, right? Um, because it was cheap, and I'm a cheapskate. But so the thing is, there was a lot of cats in the neighborhood, right? So the window <laughs> was open. With this, there's a screen. Keep in mind, there's a screen. Yeah. Um, Dakota notices a cat outside, and he gets real mad. So I am terrified because, like, I don't want him to get, like, some disease from this cat, right? Yeah. So, like, I run, put myself in between him and the window, and, like, I try to grab him, and he scratches both of my legs. <laughs> and I'm wearing, like, shorts, and he scratches both of my legs, and, like, I was bleeding so bad, and, like, I went into the, I took, like, I went into the, the tub because, like, it was hurting so bad. And mm-hmm. then I put, I put Epsom salt on. Like, the tub was dyed red with my blood. Fun. Fun. Yeah. And I still have the scars. <laughs> so, if I'm, like, if I'm taking, like, a warm anything and I look at the spots that they were, they become super prominent. It's, <laughs> it's, yeah. Uh, oh. Which actually... Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, has a link to this week's episode, sort of. Oh, perfect. <laughs> not quite, but there's there's some there's something there. Um, but anywho, uh, if you're listening still, thanks. Uh, but this is a this is actually a podcast about cryptids and the paranormal. So like, <laughs> hey, <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, it's not kitty cat talk. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And uh, this week... um, This week, you owe everyone who's reading the copy along with us, because we published these, an apology. Because I Uh, have it open, and the heading is in Comic Sans. Did you look at last week's episode? Because that's also in Comic Sans. Is it also in Comic Sans? I'm like 90% sure it was a joke on... Not last (sighs) week's, uh, the week before last. Yeah, it's Uh, also in Comic Sans. Yeah, I did that because you said something about Comic Sans, and I did it to piss you off. Um, <sighs> <laughs> um, Just the uh, worst so, fun. Yeah, so this is a continuation, kind of, of uh, the Onryo story. Um, if you don't know about what an on- Onryo is, I'm going to go over really basically what it is, but like, there's like half an episode about me talking about... like what an Onryo is and, like, all of the lore around it. So, like, a hop back two episodes in the queue and listen to that because, like, there's a lot of context here that I'm just going to be ignoring. There's um, there's a lot of context. Go check out episode 107 because there's a lot of information. And then also the most wild ending. Just it, the whole it, second it, half. It, that whole play. It's Edo Cops. The second half is Edo Cops. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, like, that's all you need to know. It's the, There's a reason I called the episode Edo Cops, and it's because, it, like, it, whatever the equi- – like, uh, the whatever the feudal – like, the 1800s Japanese equivalent of Pap's Blue Ribbon is, <laughs> you better believe that everyone was fucking drinking it in that play. Yeah. Like – Everyone, there is no doubt in my mind that every person wasn't drinking that fucking shit. 
Um, Actually, back then, it's entirely possible because, like, to keep water sanitary, you know, <laughs> there's a non-zero chance you're not wrong. It was probably basically piss water. Yeah. Um. So, <laughs> so this week, I was actually, so I was going to do a grab bag this week. Like, I was going to do the last time I did an episode. Okay. Um. Because I want to talk about ghost stories in Japan. Uh, Spoopies. Because I really like Japanese ghost stories, um, mainly because you're fucked no matter what you do. And, like, there's something that feels, like, <laughs> relatable about that. Yeah, that's life. Right? Like, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, no. You're fucked no matter what you do. It's all good. Yeah. Like, it's not that I'm, like, pessimistic. It's just more like... No, nah, I, I accept it, and, like, I'm glad that other people are, like, yeah, it's just the way that it fucking is. Yeah. Um, so, uh, like I said, check out episode 107, uh, what Brandon said, actually. Uh, check out what 107, you want more on the own Rio. Um, but I'm gonna just, really quick refresher. Um, yokai are basically the catch-all for Japanese supernatural entities, Yurei are, like, the equivalent of ghosts in Japanese lore. And then Onryo are uh, ghosts that are pissed off because something happened to them that made them feel slighted. So, Sadako, um, the grudge ghosts, those are all Onryo. They're, like, the unfinished business style of ghosts. Yeah, kind of. But, like, not just, like... But out of rage. Unfinished... It's not... It's not the deadbeat style unfinished business where, like, <laughs> they'll possess you as you yeah. fuck a, like, a 70-year-old woman. It's more the, I'm taking the unfinished business into my own hands, and I'm just gonna... I'm gonna murder that person. Yeah. Um, the, so it's a little different. They they lived in the fuck around part of their life, and as a ghost, they're in the find out part of their life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, no, the the other people did the fuck around. Yes, yeah. And then the ghost is the fu- that the ghost is their find out. Yeah, right. Um, but uh, also we discussed last time uh, that these entities are generally feminine presenting, um, because quite frankly, uh, culture's not been kind to of feminine presenting individuals. N- historically, like, no. Historically bad. In, yeah. Some would argue bad now. Yeah. Pretty bad now. Um, but anywho, if you want more on that, uh, once again, go to episode 107. Listen to the tragedy of Oiwa, which is Ido Cops, uh, which is actually called uh, Yotsuyo Ka- Kaiden. Um, but, Brandon, this week's episode, I want to play a game with you. So oh, don't read ahead. Okay, okay. I won't, don't I won't read ahead. I won't do that. Um, and I thought that originally there was going to be more than one of these. Okay. But it turns out the first one was enough to be a whole episode. Oh, I love it when that um, happens. So I'm going to present you with some choices. I love this. Choose your own adventure style. Uh, I'm going to describe this. I'm going to set the scene. Basically, we're playing D&D again after like four years of not playing D&D. And I'm going to oh. be your DM again. And everyone at home, you're free to join. Although it's going to be difficult for you to join. There is. But, you know. Also, we've got a cousin brewing up this August. So there is a 100% chance that I'm going to force force is the wrong word. Yeah. Wait, my cut. What is that? There's I have a relative who's who's also going to have a baby. So I'll have a kid that's about the same age as my daughter Oh. and they will have friends. And there's a 100% chance that, the word I don't want to use the word force, but there is no other word. Them to play D and D. Now they might. I won't tell them necessarily. That's what they're doing at first. We'll start start with the My Little Pony D and D module. I will cater or and dig up any unearthed arcana that fits in whatever genre of whatever they find interesting. There is a there is an actual My Little Pony role playing game. I believe made it. By Hasbro. Um. So, so what you're telling me is you're going to make a army of of forced child nerds. Yes. I mean, it's a good way to make sure that they don't have money. It's a good way to make sure they don't have money. It's also a good way to get them, like, adding small numbers. Like, as soon as they can, like, 
add things up to, I'll say, 20, <laughs> then they, they don't, I will make the excuse that I'm te- like helping them learn oh, from behind God. a GM screen. You're not actually looking at him. You're like slowly. You're like creeped underneath it, and you just like slowly poke your eyes over the top. Like, what the fuck, you kids doing? <laughs> you're not allowed to leave this room until we kill this dragon. That's right. I'm gonna. It's 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 gonna be Math Blaster meets uh, Fantasy World of my design. You need to you need to kill at least five dragons before you can get allowance this week. Oh Good yeah. Luck. <laughs> yeah, or it's going to be like, listen, you can mow the lawn, or you can play Dungeons and Dragons. It's up to you. Like you, you can mow the lawn, or you can fight this beholder. Yeah. Like one or the other. You're not. You don't have to do both, but you're doing one of them. Yeah, there's an. It's an or, and 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 you have to pick one. Yeah, it is. It is a. It is an X or. It is an exclusive or. Yes. Um, but Brandon, uh. For the first Onryo that we're going to play this game with. Yes. Um, I want you to... Let, let's, like... Wee, 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 you're taking a trip, right? Yes. Uh, you're in a Japanese city. Okay. For some reason. Um, and for some reason, you decided, yeah, I'm going to get off the main streets. There's The reason is Harubasho starts tomorrow, next Grand Sumo Tournament. That's why I'm there. I'm there to observe the Grand Tournament. You know what? Yeah, you're there to observe the Grand Tournament. But you got lost on your way to the Grand Tournament. Oh, pro- that's probably. I'm terrible. Probably with would happen. Yeah, probably would actually happen. Yeah, like knowing you and knowing uh, how things go, probably would happen. Yeah. Um, especially considering the fact that it's mostly in Japanese. Yeah. Um, so you're walking down. You're walking down an alley. Okay. Uh, it's gotten dark. I like me a good dark alley. Um, and it's, it's, you know, there's, there's lights cause like uh-huh. Japan is fairly well built out, but like, you know, it's not, it's, it's like a residential area that you fi- accidentally found yourself into. Cause like, it's really easy to go from like city to residential. Okay. Right. Um, and like, there's a bunch of flickering lights, right? So it's kind of like, it's spoopy, right? There's like a yeah. few trash cans, lit- like people have set out their burnables and all that a shit. A cat like, meowed you know, and then ran away. A cat definitely meowed. There's yeah. zero doubt that a cat meowed. Um, you know, there, there's like almost like no chance that anything else happened. Although there might be also some tanuki. I don't know. Maybe okay. you're in a part of Japan that has tanukis fl- like fucking around. My head instantly went out. to like back alley furry dressed as a tanuki. But like, like, like really high quality, like fresh, like clean. Like high end <laughs> tanuki suit for in the in the alley. It's uh, yeah, that's that's the picture I'm painting in my mind. Is it is it like a tanuki sex worker? No, you know what? It's just doing errands in a high end like t- like like carrying a bag of recyclables in the back alley. That that would actually be pretty funny to see. It- you know what my brain instantly went to? Have you ever seen the uh, the person in the 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 bathroom stall, and it's a guy wearing a bunny costume or a lady? I don't know, and they're sitting on a toilet, and then they like move over and then pat the toilet seat for you to sit <laughs> on the toilet as well. I have seen that. Like that's that's literally what I'm imagining <laughs> when you describe that. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh. Anywho, um. So you've seen this, and you're just kind of like, huh, all right. Um, your phone's basically dead, right? Because it usually it, is. Well, but, but like, with, like this is horror in the modern era. So like, if the phone is on, like it has no teeth. Like if you're able to use your phone, it makes everything like way less. It's in power saving scary. mode because it yeah. did it itself. Yeah. Um, you can't turn on the light as a result, right? Because okay. once it hits power saving mode, like it disables certain features and. You know, you don't have a flashlight, right? Yeah. Um. So you think you see? So you you, you think you see the furry again at this point? Okay. Like standing underneath the uh, the street lamp, and you're like, "Huh, I wonder what I wonder what their errand was or whatever." Yeah. And then someone taps on your shoulder. Oh, okay. What do you do? I. 
Okay, how is... Am I role-playing as me, or am I role-playing as a as character you. I would play? Okay, because if... Is you. Okay, so I don't have dark vision. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. no, you do not have dark vision. The Tanuki might have dark vision, There's but n- the Tanuki is not here, actually. All, all, here's new lore, new, new headcanon for me. All um, furry suits have built-in night vision goggles. Okay. Not gonna lie, if that was the case... That'd be fucking awesome. I might buy a furry suit. I would have at least just the head. Like, at least the head. Yeah. I would have something, right? Because, yeah. like... They've got to make low-profile night vision, too. Like, it's got to be doable. Fucking, dude, fucking get, like, like a tiger furry costume with that, and then you're basically, like, night vision. Yeah. And, you know... You can do whatever fucking fur color you want. It's your own creation, right? Yeah. So make like make a camo tiger. You got just like a fucking you have a fucking like full on infiltration <laughs> set. I'm picturing a ghillie suit but with a tiger head. <laughs> and that's what gives you the night vision. <laughs> it's perfect. That would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. If if the if if the armed forces the next generation of night vision goggles, they found out that they had to use furry heads to do it. Yeah. And like, you just had like soldiers who just had like a fursuit head and like, ev- like when they were normal, everything else that I, <laughs> our, our new, our new military that strategy is to force the opposition to like somehow think they're inside of saints row. <laughs> like that's our whole, <laughs> that's our whole strategy. <laughs> well it's just a video game i don't have to worry about getting yeah. shot uh, um so the, the answer to the question is brandon to the, i've been very jumpy recently because i don't yeah she's gotten sneakier my wife so i'll be like changing a diaper and then like she'll say something I'll, i won't realize she is like immediately next to me and i'll i'll, I'll be like ah, what's that so today brandon would probably jump last year brandon would probably just like turn i turn to, to face the okay. uh, whoever yeah. tapped my shoulder. Um. So you spin around, and there's a Japanese woman. But you know, you're in Japan. Yeah. Normal. So like, totally normal. Probably not that surprising. To yeah. be totally honest, it's a Japanese woman. Um. She has pale skin, long, straight black hair. Um. And despite her face being covered in a surgical mask, which you know, COVID, so like that's not that yeah, weird. Yeah. Totally normal. Right. She appears to be relatively attractive. Yes. Based on what you can see in the light, like the what lighting. Mm-hmm. Um, after you get over the initial so- shock, she asks you, Watashi Kire. She, oh, so she initiates the conversation. Watashi Kire. Yes. And you notice at this point that she's got something in her hand. Um, What's your response? I don't look it up. You don't know. Like, oh, whatever I, you I did say... look it up. I was, I was texting. Okay. Um, I would probably say, like, I don't, well, do I see what the object in her hand is? It looks metallic. I would probably take a couple steps back and then say I don't speak the you know Japanese. So you're probably dead right now. Um based on what I know about this this particular Onryo. Okay. Um because she was holding a pair of medical scissors. Oh. Um so let's 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 back it up a little bit. I would still take let's a step say back say, from scissors. I I I I would, always would you say assume somebody <laughs> wants to stab me. <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> um, it's it seems like a like taking a step back. You think it sounds like a question of like they're imploring you a question about themselves. Is the I'll, I'll give you one thing. Watashi is is the feminine way of saying my or i or like yeah. it's the first person so if if they repeat the question after i say i don't speak japanese Let's i would say they do i would then pull out oh but my phone i was gonna your, your say phone's I, fucked. I was gonna say i would your use like fucked. like google lens or whatever to like try mm-hmm. to do the translation yeah your phone you, your phone doesn't uh, have enough juice to do the translation i would probably just say i don't speak japanese again <laughs> okay so you're definitely die so um <laughs> gee thanks you you would absolutely die. There's no like you there is no way you would survive this encounter. 
based on the way it is. Yeah. Um, for, for those of you wondering, Watashi Kire means, am I pretty? Oh, I mean, the answer so to that say, question is let's... just always yes. Okay. Okay. So, like, if, so if I in the, in knew... the reality that you knew this, yeah. uh, the answer is yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, you know, she says um, Watashi Kire, but then she does a little hair flip, right? If she did that, I'd context clues. Yeah, you're beautiful. She wouldn't do that, but oh. fair enough. She's she's not exactly the most context clue. Um, she's not subtle, this yeah. particular Onryo. Most Onryo, not super subtle. It's kind of their whole thing. Okay. If I'm going to be honest. Um, so if you said no, scream, or fail the answer, which you kind of failed the fail answer. Fail the answer, yeah. You're dead. You're dead. And depending on who you ask... Um, she can carry her attack out in multiple ways, right? Uh, the most common iteration is that she simply murders you with the scissors, right? Or sickle or whatever she's holding in this particular yeah. iteration. Um, and in one example, she cuts you in half. That's pretty metal. <laughs> it's pretty metal. Um, but if you said yes, because you realized she was saying, am I pretty? Uh-huh. Or if you're like me and you would say yes anyways if you didn't know, because like... You just like are super <laughs> awkward, and you just want to please people. Um, because like I, I I took a long hard look at this this particular Onryo, and I'm like, if I didn't know what this like, because I would know what Onryo it was instantly. Yeah. But if I didn't know, and like I was being real honest with myself, I'd probably say yes. The 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 scene in my head now that you said all that is dark alley, furry under the street light. I get a tap on the shoulder. I turn around and she says, what's that? She Kiri. I say, I don't know. She says it again. I still say, I don't speak. And then she does the medical scissors, cuts me in half vertically. And he, the, the camera shot. It's, it's usually in, it's usually, it's usually horizontal, but we'll go vertical for this. Yeah. So it's, it's a camera shot from over her shoulder. Right. So you see the back of her head and shoulder. <laughs> and then you see me, like my halves split, just... like fall to the sides. And when they split, it just reveals the furry in a full sprint. <laughs> just running away. <laughs> like that's how this show's going in my head so far. <laughs> that would be amazing. Because yeah. he's um, just they're they're just doing their chores, right? They're not out for yeah. this. They they're not they are not in it for a fuck they they are not into gore. No, not at all. They were that is not under the that street is not light. Their kink. They're literally just had a bag in their hand, and they're probably thinking, "Is the brown they one?" They dropped the bag. Yeah, they're like, "Is which one's glass and which one's cardboard?" Like they're just trying to figure mm-hmm. that out in their head, and then they just see someone get split in half. <laughs> Full. And sprint. because they're, they're because they're a Chinooky, they're they're obviously colorblind. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, um, but you'd still have a chance to survive if you said yes. Okay. All right. Um, at this point, Brandon, she takes off the medical mask, which, come on, fucking COVID's still a thing. Yeah, lately. not cool. So she takes oh, uh, you know, a six-foot step back? No. No, she's she's not really about personal space. It's not her. Oh. Um, but it reveals a grotesque sight. Her mask, her face, has been carved into a Glasgow smile. You know how I got which, these scars? Exactly. <laughs> Um, so for those of you who don't know what a Glasgow style, uh, Glasgow smile is, it's when you take a knife and cut someone ear to ear and make their mouth, like, the entire mouth. Like, the slit for your mouth is, yeah. like, all of it. Yeah. You get the Heath, Heath Ledger, but Joker. You, you usually don't survive a Glasgow smile. Yeah. They're not just scars. They don't, they, they don't usually heal. They don't heal great. Yeah. And usually you're gonna... It's kind of hard to put pressure on two just, like, flaps. Yeah. So, you usually die. Can you eat a full Generally T-bone speaking. in one bite, though? So you got that going Good. for you. You do have that. For that, For that like, maybe ten minutes that you still have, like, sentience and, like, are able to cognitively think yeah. before you die. So, like, if you want to get a last meal in that's not break fluid... <laughs> um, and you want to get a T-bone steak in that's the answer yeah <laughs> um so she's she's still like 
and it looks like it's still bleeding because as Glasgow smiles do typically, they look like they're still bleeding. It's not yeah, not not unusual to say the least. Um, and it looks as though it's been like recently made. Mm-hmm. She asks a new quest question. Yes. in a grisly voice. Okay. Gordy demo. That's not how it's said at all. I said it. I butchered that. Um, I would again. I would be like, "Ow, ow, my cheeks! Why would you do that?" That would be. That'd just be how I reply. Oh no, it's her. That's her mouth. She would do that to you. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, I would. Just, <laughs> to be honest, at that point, I'd probably just run. <laughs> yeah, you're dead. Yeah, hundred percent dead. I would just. That's, I would just you're run. Dead. You're you're dead no matter what happens that's, in this story. I'd be like, I don't know so, how this this woman on bath salts from Florida got to Japan, but I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you're dead. Like zero question about it. You're dead at this point. Um, and also I kind of did an accidental Yoda impression when I said Corey demo that you did. And it was really bad. Cause like, I can't do grizzly voices. If I do, if I do a grizzly voice on like any recording things that I do, I down pitch it a little yeah. bit and like, I, I manipulate it in Reaper because I'm not really good at it. Um, <laughs> so in the worst iteration of this tale, she'll cut you in half. Oh, geez. As well. You, you, there's a lot of getting cut in half by this particular Onryo. Bad stuff happens to you. Um, in tamer iterations, though, she'll mutilate you with a Glasgow smile. So if you That's fun. Like, if you said no or whatever, like, yeah. you know. Best case scenario, you get Glasgow smiled. You're still probably dead, though. Yeah. Um, because like you're oh, in a back you might alley. Survive. That looked you crazy. Might. I was just remembering somebody I saw at um Quick Check who had just gotten out of the hospital after being like stabbed a whole bunch all over the head, mm-hmm. and they looked crazy. And like with all the st- it, was, it was like a like I didn't realize it was real until I heard them having a conversation with somebody. I was like. Oh, you done got tried to get someone tried to try to get get got you, but they didn't get got you. And you, I thought it was like a crazy like Frankenstein get up until I realized it was real. And I was like, oh, so you might survive the Glasgow smile, but you look crazy. You could potentially, you could potentially survive it. Yeah. Um. It is. It is survivable, but like, it's not good. Yeah, I, I, I probably want to. I've got a varicosity in this cheek here. That's pretty. No, you can't see it because it's on the inside. But that that mm-hmm. probably fuck me. My yeah, yeah. It, it, your odds are not great. No, especially since you're in a like a foreign nation and you're in a back alley, and the only person who saw it ran off. And like Tanuki, tell no tales. That's just a fact. That's true. Um. It's actually not true. It's the opposite of what Tanuki do, but whatever. Um, <laughs> if you respond, uh, and if you respond with a yes, realizing that she said even now, because that's what Corey Demo means, your prospects really aren't much better. So even in the best case, she'll give you a Glasgow smile. Yeah. In the worst case, she'll just walk away. And now you may say, how is that the worst case, John? Um, <laughs> she returns later that <laughs> night the to murder case, you. Her butt has an even crazier smile. <laughs> How about now? <laughs> she, oh God, no, no, you know what? She the when she says queer demo, she pulls off the face mask. So here it goes. She says, "You know, am I pretty?" You say yes. She pulls off the face mask, but then turns her back to you and. Gordon demo, but like the Ace Ventura, she like talks. Out she doesn't. Her, she does an Ace Ventura style. Like yeah. she like leans over and it's just like, <laughs> um, god damn it. Uh, also, she's in most traditional versions of this tale. She's wearing a howry, which is like a uh, type of overcoat. Okay, that like just to kind of set the stage a little more. Um, and I think she wears like a long skirt plus like boots typically um regardless uh you're fucked regardless yeah if you did this you're fucked there is a way out of it though (laughs) and the third option oh there's a third okay there's a third option because even now or am i pretty 
you can say more than just yes or no to that. That's true. You just give a really long answer and just bore her until she leaves. Honestly, not that far off from some of the ways Is you that survive really? this. Not that oh. far off. Um. So, in one example... Uh, one one potential potential answer is after you've been asked even now, you can say so so or average. Um, that's kind of a dick move. Which just it's a dick move, but it confuses her long enough that you can run away. Yeah. Um, which is weird considering the fact that if you say yes, she'll just hunt you down. So like, whatever. Yeah. L- l- um, that's so funny. If the answer is like, eh, you're a five. She like she's just just like what like just totally like doesn't know how to process. She's stunned by the, like, sheer audacity of it. Like, oh, I, I literally have no idea like, how to respond to it's that. It's, like, her eyes just glaze over, and she's like, all right, Glasgow's smile takes me from, like, from a yes, I'm pretty to a five. So, so, and she, she's like, what's it gonna, what would it take? So she's just trying to imagine what it would take to get to, like, drop below average. Given her- she, well, but before that, she's like, she's like, all right, well, I think I was, like, about an eight, so, like... Yeah. Maybe a nine, if I'm being whatever, She just starts like, looking around. She's like, is it the lighting in this alley that's doing this? She, like- she's, like, she's trying to figure this out, <laughs> yeah. because for whatever... Because cause she's been on female dating strategy, uh, and she knows about uh, high-value men, high-value women, all that stuff. Yeah. And, like, she's super... Like, let's be real. This particular Omrio, super fucking toxic. Very right? toxic. Like, like, there's no chance that this person is anything but toxic. So, like, they're probably thinking about things in these terms. Yeah, right? she starts nagging you for no reason. Yeah, because like treating, just because like tr- identifying people as numbers is already really super shitty. And I want to like mention that. <laughs> yeah. As I'm saying all this, I'm just like, maybe it should should maybe we should like couch the, the the using numbers to rate women thing um there's listen but, the only time that's appropriate is if you have a character sheet in front of you that is true and even then you don't get to pick the woman's numbers even that um, no, it's all based on her it's her her roles and she can choose how to allocate the values for you know, whatever mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you have to respect people's numbers yeah. um so, but Brandon, there's another option. Yes. There's a lot of options, actually. It turns out you can survive this pretty easily if you know what you're dealing with. Um, if you respond to the first question, do you think I'm pretty? Oh, flip it, it around. It confuses her, and she has to take a second to think about it, which gives you an opening. Because now um, she's writing you. She can't kill you right away because she's going to start asking, you know, about what's your yearly salary or like what mm-hmm. do you do? She, uh, it, all these, you know, do you have any hobbies or any any uh-huh. transferable skills outside of what you presently do that could transfer into another? But but we're gonna be real, like this particular Unreal, probably a gold digger. So yeah. the, the salary is gonna be the only thing she's gonna ask about the salary. And then she's gonna ask about other things to like hide the scent. But the salary is the thing she actually cares about. Yeah. Um. She after you, but, if the salary's below a certain number, she just like starts looking at like you're downstairs, like like well, I mean you got to show it to me, like we got to know if the numbers aren't going to do it, you've got to at least you know show me you what we're going to be gotta, working with. <laughs> you know we we got to be packing something down there. You know n- none of this. You, you, you got to yeah. And I want to once again point out this is a woman who murders people, and she's like, you got to show me the beef, dude. You got to show yeah. me the beef. Uh, so, like, not a great, whoever this is, is not a great, like, example of, uh, of humanity. No, but also don't take, like, your lessons in social interaction from Japanese ghosts. No, that's actually a internet lesson. That's also, that's actually (laughs) a better lesson. Yeah. Um, so, but Brandon, my personal favorite? Yeah. Is if you say, when she asks Corey Demo, if you say, oh, I have a prior engagement. Oh. She will excuse herself and back off. That's so funny. 
if you say I have a prior engagement, she'd be like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. If Bye. Like, I'm busy. Like, like, like yeah. I've got a yeah. hair appointment at Literally. nine. Yeah. Um, she's violent, not an asshole. There's a difference. There is a difference. I mean, we're painting a version of this particular entity as an asshole, but like, <laughs> we've changed we've changed the lore around this particular spirit a little bit for the sake of uh, comedy. Yeah, but um, like she'll kill you, but as long as there's a cancellation fee, she's like, no, I get it, I get it. Yeah, I get it. Like. You gotta do that. Like, if you miss, if you don't get it in the mailbox by, like, if it's not postmarked by tomorrow, you're fucked. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Like, it, it, I want to kill you, but, like, I get it. Yeah. Um, Regardless, though, if by some miracle you're still alive, you've just had an encounter with one of the most fearsome urban legends of Jap- Japanese lore, the Kuchisaka Ona, which is translated as slit mouth women, woman. Um, have you ever heard of the Kuchisaka Ona before, Brandon? I have. I ha- I have okay. in um not not anything in depth, and I haven't really seen anything on it. But it's one it's it's one of the few uh, Japanese ghosts that I'm I'm tangentially aware of. It, it's one of the most famous. Yeah, I know sure. her crazy long neck one. Um, uh-huh. that's about it. <laughs> Really? Yeah, I'm sure if there's have, uh, there's others that if they're described, I might be like, oh yeah, but th- those are the only two that that come to mind at the moment. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, I also am. I am. If you're being gracious and nice to me, uh huh. I am a Japanese culture enthusiast. Okay. If okay. you're being more realistic, I'm a fucking weeb. Otaku? No, that's different. Okay. I'm a weeb. For sure. Otaku Otaku <laughs> is a very specific Japanese phrase returning to, referring to someone who is extremely interested in something. And um I don't think calling myself like you calling myself otaku is weird because then it's like copying a word from another language that you yeah. have a word for. Um, which is like dedicated and like whatever, but regardless, I am not the average person when it comes to knowing about Japanese ghost stories. Um, there's actually flow charts too, that you can find online for the Kuchisaga Ona. And I put one in the show notes. Yeah. There's, it, yeah. I like the, uh, it's kills you with scissors cuts. You want to have, so they cut it, it's a, it's an escalation. So. She kills you more brutally the farther down the flow chart you make it, mm-hmm. it appears. In this particular iteration of the tale, yes. Yeah. But it, it um, is survivable. You just always make it out with a slit mouth like hers. Yeah. Um. So, before I go into the origin of Kujisaka Ona, I want to press preface this that I was unable to find a copy of the source materials for, like, original, like, primary source mm-hmm. for anything I'm about to talk about. So this is all in quotes. Yeah. Um, and because it's an urban legend, that also makes things way more difficult. Mm-hmm. Because by the very nature of an urban legend, it changes and mutates, and people adding to the story is in fact a part of the story. Yes. Very so important like, and it, makes it very interesting. It makes it very interesting, and it also makes it very difficult to condense into a single episode yeah i did it but it makes it hard so um especially considering the fact that this is japanese and like finding japanese ebooks is really difficult it turns out i found out um like specific weird fringe japanese ebooks super hard to find um so I used a combination of the Japanese and English iterations of the Wikipedia article on the Kuchisaka Ona with Google Translate. Uh, and like I used multiple sources and I also used some like Japanese native sources that I filtered through Google Translate. So like okay. all of this is like this is the the sum collection of me trying to average out a bunch of things that may be bullshit. 
Okay. So just everyone keep that in mind as we go forward. Um, so unlike recent cr- Cryptopedia and all of this, uh, the provenance of Kuchisaka Ona is very muddy, right? Um, one source points to a 1754 rebellion in the Gujo, in Gujo Mino province, which is Gujo city now, uh, which resulted in the deaths of farmers in Shiratori village. The deaths of these farmers uh, resulted in the creation of a grudge that eventually evolved into the Kuchisaka Ona myth. Um, I am completely baffled by the connection of this story to the modern myth. Yeah. I have... There would've... I have there... The thing is, though, I saw this in multiple locations, people talking about this story. Yeah, so and... they would have to evolve a lot to get to where it goes now, which as an urban yeah. legend, it could. But it could also be like that's something one guy said once, and then everybody just took it and pasted it verbatim. Because we we also run into that a lot when doing research mm-hmm. for different um, myths. Yeah, yeah. Um. So I, and because it's Japanese, it makes it way harder for me to identify when things started. This isn't a this isn't the legend of Boggy Creek or whatever where I found out that yeah. a fucking travel a travel blog uh, or a, a, a fucking what was it it was like a tour guide thing yeah edited a Wikipedia article to sell their own like tour guides yeah and like added things that were not true to the fucking legend of Boggy Creek for the sake of their tour company um because the edits came from them. <laughs> Yeah, it, it also makes it much harder to track down original historical context when the origin uh, of of the thing you're looking at is from a country that's older than just a couple hundred years. <laughs> like, anywhere it's, that's it, not the U.S., basically. Honestly, this, this event is older than the U.S. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it's borderline older than the time that the U.S. has been populated by Westerners. Oh, yeah. They, they, um, we're 244 years. Anything that that's the farthest back any like non-native U.S. history could possibly go. Okay, okay. I was I was like, mm, nah, what I, are you say? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I'm aware that uh, <laughs> that uh, uh, a continent existed before. <laughs> A continent filled with people, so who many had people, their own culture, so, so many. many people with their own culture, <laughs> own technology, own everything. Yeah, a bunch of people that get forgotten constantly. A lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, um, so that being said, these events did happen in the Japanese prefecture that was the epicenter of the modern Kuchisaka Ona urban legend. So I can only assume that the book that I couldn't find uh, has some additional context that was admitted from the summaries that I found online. And like okay. the most frustrating thing is it's a 50 cent book. <laughs> That's I could so buy funny. it for 50 cents. That's so but, funny. But like it's in Japan. So like shipping it would probably be like $30. So it's like really a $35, a 30 to 30 cent and five and 50 cents book and then not only that it would not make it in time for me to do an episode so like yeah i was just like all right i'm just gonna trust that multiple sources got this right yeah this interpretation right um but really i can only assume that the book had additional context that was omitted um uh additionally i should note that the description of this grudge um uses the kanji for resentment as opposed to Tatari. So that's very important. Okay. Because we talked about this last week. Um, Onryo have the notion of the Tatari, which is like the, uh, uh, the, the grudge, the, the, the grudge, like the literal grudge from the grudge yeah. of the Tatari, right? Where it's like a thing done by a supernatural entity, um, like a, a, a god or an Onryo. Um, and in this particular case, the grudge is not that. The grudge that they use, the kanji that they used on, Wikipedia was the kanji for resentment. Um, okay. And that's important in terms of, like, translation and mm-hmm. in translating intent. It makes it very difficult when it comes to this kind of stuff because that is super important because they're different concepts. Yeah. Um. So this is kind of separate from the Onryo 
like mythology that we know. Um, and I can't pin down a reliable source for this next bit, but there is an iteration of the story in which the Kutsusake Ona was the lover of a samurai who, upon discovering her infidelity, cut her ear to ear and said, who will think you're beautiful now? I'm not sure if this was like a real like story or if it's yeah. a apocrypha that emerged. Because like, there is a chance that this is apocrypha. Like, this whole story has huge scare quotes around it yeah. until 1979. So just everyone know that that is like the only point in history that I can definitively say, okay, these things happened in this order. Yeah, it, okay? the whole story is in like size 12 aerial, but the quotes on either end of it are like 36, 42, yeah. and in bold. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Like I said, I, uh, I question the historical... Uh, um, reality of the story uh but it is now crept into urban legends provenance so like given the deep difficult re- need to researching this as i've said um it just is what it is mm-hmm. right i'm gonna just accept it uh in the edo period however which was 1800s i think uh now i'm not sure i know that was 1700s 1700s um because that was when the oiwa thing took place uh it Finley was has at least 1603 to 1867. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so the Edo period has at least two instances of an Onryo, this type of Onryo's appearance. Um, Kaiden of Old Wan, which is Old Wan ghost stories, tells a tale set in what is now modern day Shinjuku, which is really, really close to where Oiwa's stuff happened. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, here's one version of that story A man in his late teens, Gonsuke, was walking in the rain with an umbrella. And there was a soaked woman. When Gonsuke told her to enter her umbrella, the woman's face turned around, her mouth torn from ear to ear. The shock from seeing her visage left him so stunned that he was speechless, resulting in his teeth falling out oh. and his face becoming old, and he eventually dies. So, uh, Ark of the Covenant, J- uh, uh, Indiana Jones style. A little bit. Yeah. He kind of Ark of the Covenants yeah. when he sees her face. Um, and interestingly, Brandon, this iteration of Akuchisaka Ona is described as Fox Life, which draws a tenuous line to a fir- future Cryptopedia episode on the Kitsune, which now I have to do. Brandon, yeah. did you see the news? No, what news? Okay, one second. Oh, one second. man. Um, oh. oh, wait, it was in, it was posted in the Discord. Uh, so... I don't remember where in the Discord. Oh, it was it was near the the Tomoe no Mei. So, is it general or is it a uh, blurst? So it, it's in it's in generally curves. So the Sesho Sexy, a former a famous rock in Nasu, Japan, uh, that was said to have imprisoned. The oh, that Tamamo no Mei was found broken in half after nearly a thousand years. The demon vixen is presumably on the loose again. Yes. Brandon. Brandon, the t- the Kitsune in theory, like if you, so I don't believe that the Kitsune myth is. A, I don't think that the Kitsune, like Tamamo Tamamo, Tamamo no Mei, is an actual thing, like an actual factual spirit. Yeah. But if you're of that opinion, Brandon, if you want to get fucked to death by a fox woman, hell yeah, it is your time. Yes, because she is out. She's single, and she's fucking ready to mingle and murder you. Hell yeah. So, like, if that's the way you want to go, you're ready. Um, It's oh, kind of fucking hilarious. It's going to be awesome. That would be yeah. so dope. So, I I assume the person who wrote the, the book about the foxes that I use, I'm going to be using, yeah. and, like, the one who I said, like, seems to really have an f- affinity for foxes, but, like, not just Kitsune. Yeah. Um, I assume they're going to, they're like in Japan right now, like m- wandering around the Nasu region yeah. to just like, they're just like hoping to like, oh, I'm trapped. Could somebody <laughs> help me? <laughs> Step Fox. I, I need help. Is <laughs> carrying a rock and anytime they think a spirit's around, they like place it on they their like, foot and they're like help oh no i there's no way i could possibly move i can't resist help oh god 
They got to get that um, paranormal tunesy. What? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> um. So there's a second story, however, diverting from the Kitsune. Okay. Uh, describing a similar event where a man was walking when he encountered a Kuchisaka Ona, resulting in him passing out with fear, preventing him from reaching his destination. So, like, it's not a big story. It's, like, whatever the... the so the original iterations of the Kuchisaka Ona based on this then um, presumably are less violent, right? Oh, okay. Um, and, like, if if my reading of this particular type of lore and, like, the provenance of this particular legend is true, it seems as though the, like, samurai cutting the woman's mouth she becomes an Onryo, and then, like, she's a recurring theme that appears, right? Um, I didn't really put put a lot of work into trying to determine, like, what this particular legend is explaining. I mean, there's a degree of misogyny that's inherent in mm-hmm. this, right? Because, like, it is... Like, the fact that, that seeing... Like, there's, there's... It's a Japanese ghost story from the, from the Edo period... If there's not misogyny in it, you're not really reading a Japanese ghost story. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a fact. You're really not reading any ghost story, to be honest, for no. that time period. Um, but that being said, the version of um, these stories that we started the episode with, the, like, you know, the quiz thing, um, came to the public consciousness in the 1970s in the Gifu pro- province. Hell yeah. Um, Perfect time for a ghost story. Yeah. Like, I mean, lead's in the air. Yeah. Just f- filled. Um, just filled. Just You can just get as much lead as you oh. want. All that leady goodness. The government's keeping it from us. It's in the air. It's in the paint. It's in... It's in the water, the probably. Oh, no, uh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Almost definitely. Uh, it's in the soil. It's everywhere. Yeah. We fucking love lead. For so um, long. Still do, actually. It's still a requirement still in a lot st- of things. We still love lead. Yeah. Despite the the bad, bad thing, the bad, terrible things it does to people. Um, But anyways, the precise, precise start year of the story, I'm not 100% sure of, right? Um, There's some people who are saying that, like, they had examples of it before, like, the real thing, but, like, human memory is malleable and, like, recovered memory is super duper not admissible as like actual fact just like it's not a thing no. Michelle remembers is complete bullshit that is not a thing that happens but um so that being said I found a article featuring uh Yoshiyuki Ikura um who's an associate spe- professor specializing in oral literary studies and contemporary folklore and he indicates that the rumors first began in 1978 by, based on his research. Um, when a farmer's grandmother claimed to have seen a woman with a torn mouth standing in the corner of a garden in the town of Yatsuyu, Yatsu Gifu. Um, Is it possible these are all just multiple women with like farming accidents because <laughs> labor laws weren't in place? <laughs> It is entirely possible that, like, these are just normal accidents. And it's not an insignificant amount of misogyny. Yeah. Like, let's be real. Um, <laughs> the, the 1970s... The only way to make it not be a recordable incident for OSHA is to convince all the employees that it was really a ghost and not an accident. <laughs> Don't give companies ideas. Because, <laughs> like, if if a company could successfully convince a court or OSHA that it was a ghost, you bo- you better believe there would never be another of OSHA la- a violation or anything as long there as, There would never like, be one ever again. There would never be one ever again because they would use the ghost defense every single time. Yeah. Because, like, let's be real. Someone dies, technically a ghost. Yeah. Inadmissible in court. That's the oh. trick. <laughs> uh, Your Honor, I want this case thrown out. Why? They're a ghost. Yeah. yeah. They have no legal bearing. Yeah. They're just a ghost. There's no precedent for ghosts being awarded anything whatsoever. Yeah. Oh, and then the defense just starts, like, puts their finger on, the, like, the corpse's lower lip. It starts, like, ventriloquisting. 
See, they're still alive. Got to fight bullshit with bullshit. We can end up Bernie's this. God. <laughs> Imagine. Okay. Imagine a courtroom where there's a murder victim who they bring to the stage and they're just weakened at Bernie's puppeting them onto yeah. the stage. <laughs> it sounds like the kind of bullshit that would show up in like a law show to like or like a detective show to trick the to trick the um the per- the murderer into admitting <sighs> to it. Well, you know, like it literally I think I've I think I've seen episodes of Detective Conan that don't we can Bernie's it, but like close enough it to trick people into admitting to murdering people. It's you know th- this isn't as crazy a jump for me as I think I wish it would be because they do use psychics. Like law enforcement will use psychics to like try to like find stuff. So it's really, really how is that? so much different than just having a psychic in a courtroom. The only difference is the body's in the room with you and they're like puppeteering it. Like uh, that's the, that's it's, it's the leaps, not as huge as it should be. No, it's, it's actually not that far. No. It's like, cause like, yeah. Oh, I, I gave myself the sads. The sads. Uh. You made the sads. <laughs> yeah. You made with the sads. Um, but this rumor got catalyzed, Brandon. Okay. Uh, oh wait, did I mention the fact that it was in a corner of the garden? I don't yes. know. We kind of yeah, lost. Yeah. We kind of lost track because we were talking about like weekend at Bernie's and things, and like anytime weekend at Bernie's comes up, that like consumes all of my thought process because that movie is insane. It is. You know, they're right. making a third one I, with the original guy that why? played Bernie. Why? Yeah, they're really going to use his body. <laughs> 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 they make weekend at bernie's serious. three where they really weekend at bernie's the actor that played bernie <laughs> i thought you were serious for a second there <laughs> and i feel really stupid <laughs> oh that'd be too meta for the for any any place to buy off on that i mean it'd just be it'd be a it'd be a skeleton at that point like no one's gonna believe it <laughs> It's not It'd be skeleton. basically skeletalized, right? Like, how long? Or nah. like, what stage of decomposition? Imagine if it they could like just be horrific. Uh, just imagine if they horrific. like. Imagine if they like Lennon him, <laughs> and like they there's like imagine if there's like the tomb of Bernie that just exists out in the world, <laughs> and and like it has like a little sign on it in case of emergency break glass yeah. <laughs> and there's like a uh there's like a rig next to it that like is oh yeah for puppeteering bernie so you just have like an emergency like corpse puppet yeah they it's it's some kind of framework or bracket just mounted the to the back of a boston dynamics dog <laughs> <laughs> There's an SCP actually that's not that far from that. Oh God! Yeah. Oh. Um, so, this rumor ultimately was catalyzed when the story was published in Gifu Nuhan Shimbun, which is a newspaper, um, in the early in early 1979. Which, uh, according to Iku, uh, Ikura, the um, the professor, the associate professor, uh, it made Japan's first purely Japanese urban legend. So the Kuchisaka Ona is a very, like, in terms of folklore, it's a very, very significant piece yeah. of urban legend. Um, Because it's like... Because, like, actually, if you look at a lot of Japanese lore, it has its roots in other East Asian countries. Um, Japan Japanese lore is kind of like a cultural magpie in a lot of ways, where they pull yeah. a little bit from a lot of places, which is, like... Kind of the fascinating thing about Japan is like they incorporate a like because like the kanji system is is Chinese characters, right? Yeah. So, like, although that, um, that makes a lot of sense, right? So J- J- Japan's an island, so that would mean I mean of uh, naturally trade at ports becomes like a massively significant factor. Yeah. So a lot of it's... their folklore 
would it would make sense that it's bits and pieces from people who they'd be having conversations with at these ports. So so 100%. naturally, a lot of it's going to come from other places. It's fascinating, honestly. Yeah, it's super fascinating to me. Um, although some bad stuff happened in Japanese history. This is not behind the bastards or the dollop or the Japanese dollop. This is this is Cryptopedia, and I'm not going to go over that. <laughs> uh, what I'm just I, all I'm going to say is if you look into the backstory of the region, which is of uh, that Pokemon Arceus is set in. Uh huh. And you look into the actual backstory of Hokkaido, not great things happen to the people who lived there <laughs> before it was colonized. Yeah. Which is basically what you're playing through in Pokemon Legends Arceus, which makes me feel a certain way. Oh. <laughs> and I'm not sure what it is. Uh, is it good? Um, Pokemon Arceus. Okay, I, I don't. I haven't, I haven't gotten it yet. I just. Either. I know the rough, broad strokes of the story, and I'm like, they're they're like talking about the uh, the like colonization of Hokkaido, aren't they? Because so, if you want to know more about this, because I'm not going to go into this because it's way too complicated, and like, um, I haven't done any research on it, so like, I don't want to say. Hokkaido. I don't want to say anything that's wrong. Um, uh, but if you look into the the Anu people, I A I N U. Oh, okay. Some really bad stuff that they, connected their culture a couple is basically dots. erased. Yeah, their culture is basically erased, and yeah, they were in Hokkaido. So, like, yeah, let's. Let's that's that's just like a thing yeah. that you could that's some extra credit you can do for the class if you want to. Um the extra cr- the, the the reward is sadness. Yeah. So um that's all. That's uh, I you you connected those dots now I'm sad again. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um so naturally Brandon school children began to iterate on the story um through a game of 1970s telephone. The mysterious woman uh, was then described as having a sickle, wearing a mask or red coat, and she could run 100 meters in six seconds, which is pretty fucking fast. Yeah. Because that's like uh, 20 meters per second. There's... There's a non-zero chance, right? Because we we do this thing. We've we've been doing this thing for like 109 times. Um, There's a non-zero chance that my daughter is getting like introduce new monsters under the children's beds that she goes to school with oh 100 percent. there is a non-zero chance that that happens yeah a non-zero chance especially considering the fact that your daughter seems to enjoy horror she loves horror movies and i've got the books upstairs and it's gonna be your playroom that's got all my my folklore and cryptozoology books up there Mm -hmm. oh Mm -hmm. she's gonna be introducing Mm -hmm. some kids to some things some kids are gonna have a time yeah, and she won't know it's weird because that's just how she, how she lives. How she's raised. Yeah. That's just her life. She won't know. She won't know how weird it is. No. Until it's too late. Yeah, until <laughs> it's far too late. Mm-hmm. Far too late. <laughs> um, But she was also given a hatred of hair pomade for some reason oh. and a love for Beko Kame, which is a, like a traditional Japanese hard candy. Um. Which could actually save you if you knew about those two things. Um, That's it. I wear a lot like, of pomade. Not a lot. I, I, I tend to use pomade. It seems interesting to me because in... I don't want to say which Asian country because I don't know which one. But like the greaser look is the whole thing now. Or... Like, like, currently? Because if you're talking about Boncho, that's a thing. Like, giant pompadours in leather jackets. That's there's that's a thing in Japan. That was a thing in Japan, at the very least, in the 90s. In the was that Japan? 80s. Okay. 100%. It's the Bet's Boncho. That's, like, a, that, the, the, like, art, like, the, the style of thing is, like, you're a Boncho. Yeah, because I, I just remember seeing a lot of, like, Japanese people with big old pompadours. And I didn't know where um, that was coming from. Bancho is the leader of a Japanese gang of de- delinquents during the 
Ritsuyo, Ritsuyo period, which is... Yeah, I just thought in the early aughts, like, it got Grease Lightning over there and it did pretty well or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's the governmental p- position that I was reading, not the... Oh. It was in the 70s. 70s and in the 80s, it was kind of old-fashioned, so... It, it might be, it might have had a comeback, but, like, they totally did pompadours. Yeah, like, crazy big, like, with lots of pomade. Mm-hmm. Like, lots. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, like, you could, if you had pomade or candy, you were safe, also. <laughs> Wait, like, we, I got they got it. So, the new, the movie changed officially, right? It's, it's you know, close up on the one with the mask, she says, you know, like Watashi Kiri, and then it cuts to George Clooney, and he just goes, "I'm a Dapper Dan man," and then, <laughs> and then she just takes off or whatever, because he loves <laughs> Dapper Dan from uh, but, "Oh Brother Where Art Thou." But then, but then, Brandon, it, it's that's not how that happens. You, you're missing a key point. How George Clooney gets there? Turns out the Tanuki whole time George Clooney. Oh, that's the twist. Oh, that is the twist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, the body gets mm-hmm. split in half. It's not the Tanuki sprinting at full speed away from her. It's, it's the Tanuki taking off the towards mask. Towards her, pulls off the night vision fur mask, and mm-hmm. it's George Clooney with just all the Dapper Dan in the world, and that's how mm-hmm. he saves us. Mm-hmm. Well, he, save, he saves no one because... Yeah, the corpses You're are dead. He just point. prevents uh, more corpses. Oh, yeah, well, no, he doesn't, because then the the Kuchisaka Ona just runs away and goes kill to kill someone who's not yeah near pomade. He does what he can, Big Daddy Clooney. He does what he can for us. He, he does what he can, but he could have probably done more. Yeah. Um. So, in the span of six months, the rumor spread from Gifu to a na- a nationwide phenomena among school age children, which is fucking wild. Okay. Yeah. Because this is 1979. Like, there's no internet whatsoever, and like, literally, the only way to spread things is through telephone. So it's like yeah. a literal game of telephone. Um, but Brandon, the fact of the matter is, it's not because there was like a historical basis or like a historical like popular legend about the Kuchisaka Ona. It wasn't some peasant's grudge or an overreaction to a cheating lover. The reason it spread so much, Brandon, is because of Japanese cram schools. Like, they're just full of people? Is that what a cram school is? Okay, so I, I'm glad I covered what a cram, like, add what a cram school is. So, yeah. cram schools, or uh, gakushu juku, um, in Japan, are private schools requiring a fee... Um, from students to participate. These schools do not replace the general ed- education of students and are generally attended as after-school lessons. In the 1970s, oh. the market for cram schools, like, exploded, right? Yeah. Um, which resulted in a massive number of students between elementary and university ages yeah. attending these for-profit schools in what became an educational arms race. Because yeah. you have a lot of kids who are getting really good at taking tests and, like... You have a lot of places that are trying to, like, limit the number of people who get in. So, yeah. like, you get increasingly difficult tests and students who are spending an increasing amount of time studying. Yeah. Um. And the the, ga- the Gaku Shu Juku was a particular type of cram school that explicitly targeted these types of tests. Um. So, effectively, what ends up happening is school got harder which results in students needing to attend more cram sessions. So, like, you've just got a bunch of fucking... So, like, it's yeah. cram in the sense of, like, a cram session um, before a test, right? Yeah. But, like, instead, you're paying someone to do the cram session, to cram it into your head after school in addition to going to school. And then after the cram session, you're still cramming after the fact. Yeah. It's a lot of school. It's a, it's lot, a lot. Yeah. Um is that a potential origin for like the stereotype about like Asian students and like studying? 
is is like a holdover from like cram schools from the seventies. I don't want to get into this on this podcast, but it's not. It's okay. At, uh, based on the stories Christina has told me, it's it, it's another thing that's going to give people the it's sad. A t- <laughs> it's a totally different thing that I don't want to go into on this podcast. Ah, uh, okay. Um, but it's not it's not cram schools that's responsible for that. Okay, that. I can tell you that. All right. Um, because but it is not cram schools. Cram schools is not the source of that particular stereotype. Okay. Um. So, basically what's up happening here, though, is there's a cycle that results in a large number of Japanese students attending after-school educational programs, which includes students from different districts and different schools, right? And not only that, but you're keeping students out far later, right? Yeah. Because, like, school gets, let's say school gets out at 2, right? Mm-hmm. Takes 30 minutes to get to your cram school. Then, so it's, like, 2.30 to 3, somewhere in that range, yeah. right? Yeah. School starts. It lasts until at least six. So you, you're spending three to four hours. Yeah. In you're cram- getting like out cramming. as the sun is setting. You're getting out at sunset or after dark, depending on the time of year. Because keep in mind, uh, I think Japan is actually, like, certain parts of Japan are actually on a higher longitude than we are, too. Yeah. So, like, if it's winter, it's even darker, like, earlier. Um, so you're dealing with. People like getting out at a really dark and like time. And the thing is, because it's later, you're getting like these kids who are like fresh, like they're col they're like not even college aged. Yeah. Are getting exposed to the adult world like way sooner, right? Because you have a bunch of people who are leaving work, you have a bunch of people going to bars, you have a bunch of people just being adults. Right. But like not not the adults that they're used to in their life, because everything in their life is filtered through like this. Like there there is a different filter that people have for kid when they're dealing with kids. Than yeah. When they're dealing with like other adults. Right. So this basically results in a bunch of opportunities for students from different geographic regions to meet and ha- um, have have like spread unheard of experiences and like have these unheard of experiences and like propagate these rumors. Yeah. Right? As a result, Kuchisaka Ona had the means to spread beyond its initial scope, eventually elevating its status to an urban legend um, above previous tales in Japanese society. And not only that, Kuchisaka Ona is one of those stories that has left Japan. Right. Yeah. And like, it's, it's known enough to, Certain like people with passing interest in this type of stuff actually know about Kuchisaka Ona, which is impressive, right? Yeah. But rumor, however, Brandon, isn't enough to spread the uh, Kuchisaka Ona's like magnitude of story, mm-hmm. um, even if it were particularly spooky. Now, Kuchisaka Ona uh, rang as a possibility, like like a believable possibility to these students, right? Hmm. Um, who were flooding these cram schools. Because they were leaving later in the evening, they saw adults that they had never seen before. Drunks returning from bars. Yeah. And ladies who were heading to nightlife entertainment jobs was the descrip- was the, the exact description that I heard. Okay. I read. I can guess at what um, some of those are. Yes. So, uh, and it was a generally more adult world. And like, if you aren't aware... Japan has, like, so there's the notion of hosts and hosts S clubs, which is, like, there's, like, a term, like, water play or something along those lines. Like, mm-hmm. that's a whole thing, right? Which is adjacent or a part of the sex industry between, depending on who you talk, which then has, like, stuff like soap lands and, like, a bunch of shit. Yeah. So, like... There's there is a lot of adult entertainment in quotes that could be happening. Um so as a result, these kids who are actively leaving school to go to more school, yeah, were naturally more anxious encountering these different adults. And like, let's be real, if you're going to school after going to school, you're a fucking nerd. Yeah. And I don't say that I don't say that like derogatorily 
you just don't not become a nerd if that's who you, what you're doing. Because if you're spending all your time learning, I feel like that's the definition of nerd. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> like, at least one definition. So, like, these are, like... Because, like, the, the way that I'm picturing it is these are, like, innocent kids who are just, like, getting exposed. Like, it's kind of like me in high school seeing s- certain things, and it's yeah. just like, what? <laughs> this is real? What? Oh. Oh, God. <laughs> like, that's kind of the vibe that I get off of, like, as I read these stories. So, yeah. like, um, but basically, in essence, the Kuchisaka Ona is that the youth had a collective stranger danger panic attack. And Kuchisaka Ono became a, con- a projection point on it because, like, it was believable enough to have, like, an attractive, like, run into an attractive lady in the night because they were going to a nightlife entertainment Yeah. Thing. Right? That's funny. Um, But, Brandon, it wasn't just the students. Um, Even teachers and parents joined in on, on the panic of, like, over Kuchisaka Ona, organizing yeah. patrols and planning groups for students to leave cram schools as, like, units. Um, now, that being said, I don't think that this is exclusively because of Kuchisaka Ona. Yeah. Because uh, as we mentioned, um, the 1970s were a fucking wild time for violence. Yeah. Um, Like, a lot of weird shit happened in the 70s. Like, basically every modern serial killer that's of note, with, like, the exception of Jeffrey Dahmer and a handful of other ones, like, super famous ones. Yeah. Like, the 70s. It was mostly the 70s. Like, some of the heaviest hitters are 70s. Yeah. Um, All the A-listers. But, <laughs> a lot yeah, of the, most much. of the A-listers. Most of the A-listers were in the 70s. Um... So, the legend eventually dies down a little bit during the summer, uh, but the entity had become enmeshed in the collective consciousness of Japan, and it spread just be- beyond just the island nation to South Korea and China, which then gave it new traits as, like, she traveled between those areas. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because it's, like, largely the same thing, um, and I kind of lost the source that told me what the changes were, and I couldn't find it again. So, we're just going to pretend that the changes <laughs> are minimal. There was something about turning left and, like, it couldn't turn left. Um, the South Korean one is, like, really enmeshed in the, the red, like, motif. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but, Brandon, this story isn't over. Because there's a lot of shit on the Japanese Wikipedia page for Kuchisaka Ona. Um, and like I said, uh, in South Korea, the red motif became really a serious thing. She was called the Red Mask Woman. So, like, all the red, like, stuff uh, happened. Oh, okay. Um, which it, you know, was very associated with the, the red iconography. Um, and then the legend saw a resurgence in the 1990s because there was a rise in plastic surgery and medical malpractice in Japan. Um, oh. And in this particular iteration, the woman was a person who had horrendously failed plastic surgery and had gone mad and was, like, yeah. seeking vengeance. Right? Trying to get um, on the Jersey which, Shore. It's it's the Snooky defense. Yeah. Um, it's the Snooky. It's the Snooky corollary. Famed, f- famed uh, local Snooky. Yeah, I hate the fact that she's. Where did she even go to school? Like, I know she went to to. Uh, she went to Uck. Uck. Yeah, she she went but, to Uck, and then she went to um. But like, where did she go to high school? She went to Uck, and she went to one other college. High school, I don't. I don't know. She, because you don't go to Uck unless you're from the Hudson Valley. Yeah, I think she had. You just don't. I think she had one of my English professors. Honestly, you don't go to Uck unless you are in Ulster County, to be really honest. That's why it's called Uck. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Ulster County. Yeah. Um. So, anywho. Fucking Snooky. <laughs> snoo, snoo. <laughs> Um, so there is what I believe to be a piece of Apocrypha. Um, I couldn't find more detail, like a lot of details on this. Yeah. Because like, it, it's like a, a footnote in the, in the discussion. And like, not only is it a footnote, it's like the translation isn't great. And like, I found other people who more or less copied the same translation that I got. Like, so there's no re- real unpacking of this. Yeah. But there's an, there was an accident on August 18th, 1968, 
um, relating to the Haida River. So what happened was a bus fell into the river, right? I'd literally never heard of this accident before, but apparently it's like one of the worst bus accidents that's ever happened. Oh, really? It's a real bus accident? It's a real bus. Oh, okay. Like, this is a real thing. What I'm about to talk about is real. Gotcha. The link to Kuchisaka Ona is the tenuous and confusing part. Okay. The bus accident actually happened. Gotcha. Um, cool. So basically, two sightseeing buses were washed off the road into the Haida River uh, by a landslide. Um, the bus was submerged, which resulted in the deaths of 104 of its 107 passengers. Damn. Eight of the bodies never being found, which is wild. Yeah, well, landslide. I mean, they could be under all the land that slid. Oh, no. It, no, I know. It's... it. Like, it's not, like, it's wild in the, the sense of, like, that's a huge death count yeah. for a bus accident, right? Like, huge death toll um, for for a tour guy, for a tour. Yeah. When, it, when you have 104 deaths on a tour, usually not great. Not going to help your Yelp review at all. You you did something wrong, because whole, the whole point of giving someone a tour is so they don't get themselves killed. Yeah. A bit. You kind of failed at the fundamental, like, promise of the tour. Um, but yeah, like I said, there's, like, a really brief sentence uh, implying that somebody found the skull of a Kuchisaka Ona when they were, like, searching the, the Haida River for, like, the missing bodies. Um, and, like, they said that they, like, restored the skull to like see that it had a slit mouth which makes no sense because the, the mouth slit would be entirely part. soft tissue yeah so like there's literally no way you could tell that from a skull i have no idea what that i don't know if that sentence is even right but all i know is it links to the Hyder river that's literally all i know about maybe it. somewhere in translation like head flipped to skull no no oh maybe maybe but, like, huh. I don't think that's the case because it's skeletonized. It's literally, oh, like, if you, take, yeah. if you take the exact wording and, like, translate it, it says skeletonized. So I have no idea what the fuck is going on in that story. Is the if anyone actually speaks idea, Japanese and can read that? Like, that the landslide exposed her, like, previously buried remains? I think the idea is that the Kuchisaka Ona is one of the people who's missing and died on the bus. Oh. I think that's the idea. So, yeah. But Brandon, there's a more baffling hypothesis that I found almost nothing about. Yeah. Which um claims that the CIA was called called to study the spread of the Kuchisaka Ona myth. And now the, the CIA has done a lot of stuff, but the Kuchisaka Ona story doesn't result in the toppling of a democratically elected leader. Yeah. Um, the mass poisoning of communities of people of color, and nor is it the unethical application of psychedelics. So, like, I kind of assume this theory's bunk. It just doesn't fit their yeah. MO. They, they, it would be too helpful. It, it'd be too helpful. They like to, like, more fuck around in, like, the global south most of the time. Yeah. And, yeah. and then, yeah. Yeah, it, there would be no motivation for the CIA to interact with this, like, whatsoever. It's no. Whatever. Um, but, Brandon, we're, we're getting close to the end of this episode, which is, uh, I didn't think was going to be this long when I wrote it initially. I was actually trying to write a short episode. And then the Kucha Saka Ona turned out to have a lot of weird shit about it. Um, <laughs> but before we close the episode out, I want to cover some of the variations of the story that exists out there. All right. Um, cause there's a lot of them and like, I definitely am missing some of them, but these are the ones that I could find. Um, the origin of the Kuchisaka Ona kind of varies. Like you'll notice that I didn't actually give an origin story because the legend doesn't really have an origin story that's like defined yeah, like, and universally accepted. It kind of just fits whatever the teller is trying to like convey, um, or whatever their personal anxieties are over. Uh, but the first um one it, it really appears like the kuchisaka ona is less of a ghost and more of just like a really mad woman who's affected by like harmed by plastic surgery yeah um which like triggers her to just murder scores of elementary school children right like full weird, yeah star wars on that one 
it's a little it's a little Vader. It's yeah, a little Vader. Got the younglings for sure. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of Vader. I, I mean, almost exactly Vader. Yeah. Huh. Oh, um, but who some also like they took. Would George Lucas have no? Never. I'm because tr- they 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 drew some. Uh... This this would be too. So this this particular one, the plastic surgery one, came out in the nineties. So it would be yeah, post, so. Uh, post Star Wars. So yeah, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And like, I think the. Did you see that um, kid that went ham at the Star Wars? Um, like they had like a little kid. Oh, let me. You keep talking. I'll try to find this. We'll do this at the end okay. of the episode. All right. Um. So there's another iteration in which they're the siblings of the Kuchisaka Ono are included. Uh, in this case, all three siblings get uh, plastic surgery. The first to have successful surgeries. However, the youngest had a botched surgery conducted by a man who used far too much pomade, explained the pomade <laughs> idea, uh, which resulted in the characteristic torn mouth. And then in another iteration, there are three separate Kuchisaka Ona, um, with each of the sister being an Omria having their own horrifying accident. One had a botched plastic surgery. Uh, the other had a terrible car accident that gave them the Glasgow smile. And then the last one just kind of went mad and cut their own face. Jeez. Um, and then there's a- additionally an iteration in which uh, she gets the scars through like a totally accidental incident. Like, does it herself on accident. Yeah. There's no malice. There's no like... Vi- like no violence was perpetrated against her. She just like somehow accidentally cuts her mouth open, like a lot. Oh, you know what? She probably had one of those ice pops, the long yeah, ones. Too sharp. Yeah, the long ones where you just snip the top off and suck out the fruit. You know what I'm talking about? The freezy. Pops. I know, but the but it wouldn't be able to hold. Oh, you the plastic. The plastic. Oh yeah, you're right. It might have been yeah. plastic. It's that plastic. It cuts your mouth every time. That plastic does cut your mouth. It sucks because those are delicious. Um, yeah. But Brandon, there's also additional ways to feed her that I haven't covered. Yes. So, um, in general, like the easiest way to feed her is to confuse her, like we said at the beginning. Like, yeah. Confusing neutral responses, things along those lines. Talking about dogs. Uh, will work because she fucking hates dogs apparently. Um, and if you scream, a dog is coming, uh, or uh, <laughs> draw the kanji for dog on your hand, she'll run away because she's afraid of dogs. Okay, and like she'll fall. And if if this sounds like an element, a thing an elementary school student would come up with, yeah, that's because that myth probably was made by an elementary school student. Like almost all of these are probably elementary school students. Yeah, the ones that I'm about to say. Um, additionally, if you hide in a record store or cosmetic shop, she won't follow you in. Uh, okay. If you climb to the third floor of a building, she won't follow you past it because she can't get past the second floor. Why? Um, I, I try to find that out. Couldn't figure it out. Literally couldn't figure it out. Uh, I think I might've had a source that said it, but I lost the source and I can't oh! find it. Wait, that might make, I think in... No, Je- it's it's it's, it's four. not about the number it, it, in Japanese. I think the number three is bad luck. No, in Japan is number four is bad luck. Four is bad luck. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I thought okay. One, One of them. Oh, well, because it's ichi na ichi ichi ni san shi, and she is the word for death. Oh, yep, you're right. Yeah. So that's why that's why the fourth... Uh, I thought that too at first, and then I was like, no, it's the fourth floor. So, like, that's weird. Yeah. Um, so uh, then you can also say pom- pomade three or six times. Not sure which. Pomade, pomade, pomade. Um, or, yeah, or you sprinkle pomade because she just hates the smell. Um, and then there's two iterations where you're screaming. Um, one of them, you scream... Niniku, which is garlic, repeatedly. And in the other, you scream hug, which is bald, repeatedly. So, and nobody knows why. There's no, like, explanation. Which tells me a fucking elementary school student who'd like to say the words for garlic or bald. Yeah. Came up with it. Um, But Brandon, 
the best trick is to be born with type O blood. Because apparently, she doesn't attack people with this blood type. Okay. Unilaterally. Cool. And then for those of you who don't know, that that's like actually not that weird. Um, because there is a theory, like a personality, like a theory of personality that involves blood type in Japan. And O types are like considered resilient, flexible, optimistic, blah, 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 blah. Um, it's, it's basically phrenology, but for blood types. So whatever. Um, but it's a thing. That's why, that's why in like, uh, JRPGs, they'll have the blood type. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Because it's supposed to be like a part of the character profile because like. Huh. Uh, there's like shorthand that that means. Yeah. Like, it represents certain things and certain character traits. Yeah. It's a thing. Um, but Brandon, because it's me, we're not going to finish this episode without talking about the pop culture influence. Nice. Um, Kuchisaka Ona is like a literal ex- expression of pop culture, right? But she's extended past the bounds of her original myth. Um, in addition to peer- appearing in the Cryptopedia alumnus film, Pom Poco. <laughs> yes, she appears in Pom Poco. I didn't find a screenshot, but she's in there. Um, she's made an appearance in a number of anime and manga. Yeah. Uh, and has been the star of at least three horror movies and even been on the sh- the uh, like the inspiration for the uh, episode in the 2014 Constantine series. Huh. There's like a character. There's a, a monster based off of her. Yeah. Additionally... She was co-opted by Hostess near the initial wave of rumors. And now, for those of you who don't know, Hostess are like... Twinkies. Sort of sex... They're kind of like sex workers. Um, oh, that... Like kind of, they, for, when you said like, Hostess, I like, went to junk food. Oh. Yeah, no, they're like they're like the kind of people who like you hire for companionship and they like drink with you and talk with you and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Um. So... What would happen is the hostess covered her mouth and asked the customers if they thought she was pretty. Um, the customer would have to respond with either Beko Ame or Pomade because B- Beko Ame is the hard candy and Pomade is the thing she hates. Yeah. I don't understand why. It doesn't make any sense to me, but apparently it was super fucking popular. Um... Additional, additionally, I keep saying fucking additionally. The Kuchisaka Ona also became a term for talkative woman, uh, because it's a phrase for mouthy women. Oh, jeez. I was gonna make a joke about how like uh, I got the misogyny in under the wire. Yeah, but like it was way sooner <laughs> than this. Um, and then in a bonkers 1970s joke, a 25 year old woman. Living in Hijime, Himeje City, walked around with a knife and pretended to be the spirit on June 21st, 1979. She was arrested and uh, no children were harmed. Okay. Were adults harmed? No. no okay, good. I mean, she was an idiot. That was a dumb thing to do. Yeah. Um, but, like, you know, lead changes people. Uh, but before I finish this, but once again, I keep saying but before. Uh, I want to highlight what I can only describe as one of the most wholesome ma- manga ever featuring the appearance of a murderous ghost. The manga itself is called Kuchiga Sakatemo Kimi Niwa, which it translates to even if you slip my mouth and it's fucking adorable, Brandon. <laughs> uh, the manga, in the manga, a Kuchisaka Ona named Miraku uh, is waning in power and as a result must get married to a human from a family which maintains urban legend with, like, a power of words that they have. Yeah. She's not entirely pleased with this and doesn't really want to get married. Um, and she attempts to get out of the marriage to the fiancé, Koichi Sano, with a challenge wherein, if she scares him within a year, the marriage will be annulled. In contrast, Koichi's objective is to make her love him in that year. So, like, huh. she has to scare him, but he also has to make her fall. Like, yeah. has to, like, convince her to, like, love him. Love him. Right? Which is kind of a wholesome way of treating, like, a arranged marriage. Yeah. Personally. Um, also, he's, like, completely unafraid of her because, like, uh, it, so it's adorable. Like, <laughs> it's an adorable, I read read every bit of it this week. Yeah. Um, but Koichi, the 
uh, Kochi, Kochi, because he doesn't have the eye. Yeah. Um, Kochi more or less has a single target sexuality, and Moroku is that. <laughs> Perfect. To her, like, absolute chagrin. Yeah. Because, like, she goes full-blown Kuchisaka Ona, slit mouth, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Um, but it does literally nothing to him. He has it has no impact on him. He's completely unafraid of her. That's so funny. And if anything, he's just horny for her. He is into Which brings it. Brings me to my final point, Brandon. There is in fact Kuchisaka Ona porn. Oh, nice. And yes, it is focused on blowjobs. Hell yeah! Let's do some searches. Yep. I there's a lot. Actually. There's a decent amount. Yep. There's a decent amount. Um Ugh. there's a hentai in which she has at least three dicks in her mouth because she's got the slits. C- c- yeah. yeah. It just too toothy. hmm Oh no, she's super that's actually a thing I forgot to mention. Um in some iterations she has like super sharp teeth. Yeah. 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 Huh, look at that. There's a, it's there's, weird a that it's, there's a penis. It's weird that it's so blowjob forward because like I feel like the Glasgow smile, like the open Glasgow smile would not be really conducive to yeah. effective. To be honest, these really aren't doing it for me. <laughs> it's kind of a it's kind of a boner killer. Yeah. To be completely honest. Yeah. Yeah. Can confirm. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Yeah, that's been that's been Kuchisaka Ona. I don't have anything else to talk about with her. That's that's her story. She's a wild story with porn. Yeah. Like every other Japanese female ghost. Actually, every other Japanese ghost. There's porn of literally every Japanese ghost I've looked for porn of. <laughs> Wait. Wait. Who I'm sorry, I was just reading our patrons. There's Yeah, I I will go over that in a second. Do you want to do you want to get to the plugs cuz we'll get to sure. that. I I think I think the implication is I'm the one who's supposed to read that particular one. Is that that's a real one? All right, I'm going to have to go update one of my cop That is some copies. That is a real that is a real patron. We're going to get to in a second people who are listening. Don't worry. We'll get yeah. there. Um so I guess let's do plugs. Cuz you you you've jumped Oh, also um I have one last image in the copy. I know. I like uh, that image. That's a yeah, pretty funny image. That's, that's for the patrons. That's for the patrons. Um, so, as always, if you enjoyed the podcast, our website's CryptopediaCast at gmail.com. Our in- uh, CryptopediaCast.com. Our Instagram is at CryptopediaCast, as well as our Twitter. Our email is CryptopediaCast at gmail.com, or us at CryptopediaCast. And, of course, we have a Patreon involving a bunch of jackalopes that we thank every week. Yes. And Brandon... Uh, read one, read one through three and then, uh, five and six, and then I'll read number four. Okay. Well, thank you very much to Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider. You read the other two. Oh, okay. Matthew two. Smith and Bushcraft Kelso. And then our latest patron, and I put that in quotes, uh, is the Young Flat Earth Creationist Consortium. Exactly like science, all caps, but only better, all caps. <laughs> um, so thank you, Lenwood. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was going to be my guess. <laughs> yep. Um, we gotcha. <laughs> we also have a Facebook group that I don't do anything in and a Discord that I do do stuff in. I have like six copies. I'm, I'm, I have to go update all my... <laughs> my credits in um if you uh enjoy the podcast be sure to rate review subscribe all that good stuff send it share it with friends uh, i'm trying to decide whether this episode's a good episode to share with friends or not and i'm not sure uh because we do talk about kuchisaka own a blowjobs yeah it depends how how blow t- beach forward your friends how, are. how- yeah, how however much your friends enjoy blowjobs, if they don't enjoy blowjobs that much or enjoy talking about them, maybe not this episode. Yeah. Because it kind of ends a little bit blowjob focused. Anywho, if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them. I'm on like an urban legend kick right now, so if you got any urban legends, uh, I'd be happy because like, I'm really just, really all this is just me ramping up to do Slender Man. <laughs> it's another one that's going to give us a- the sads. 
That's not even a joke. I am literally just like working my way up to cover Slender Man because like that whole thing is buck wild and like I more or less watched it unfold in real time, so it's like weird to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but anywho. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyardeekb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. On Instagram, I'm me2057. My Twitter is at jfdunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. And our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Muckle Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com. His email is Hill at gmail.com and you may have just seen some of his artwork on uh i believe it was jimmy fallon uh oh was it had um i forget who 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 had some on yeah nice yeah nice awesome um as always um i'm john i'm brandon and things are gonna get weird